Hey guys, Jarko Cyclone FPV, and I've got some customers that are getting ready to come in today who are buying the Petrol 75 kit. The only difference is, is that they're going to upgrade the actual remote. Um, I'm not I'm not a fan uh, necessarily of the remote that comes with it, especially if you're flying multiple drones. And in this case, these are some students from this uh, semester's uh, drone class at York uh, Junior High. And so they are going to be, uh, they are adding these to their selection. So we're actually going to put them in a Free Sky Radio, an X9 Lite. This happens to be an X99S, uh, and I figured I'd go over how we're going to set that up, okay? So here it goes. Let me, uh, let's get started here with our picture-in-picture. Picture. First thing that we're going to do is uh, we have our drone right here. We have a fully charged 2S battery that comes with it right there. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that these have XM Plus receivers in them, and if you're running the XM Plus on here, you need to make sure that if you're going to add a radio, these are not upgraded to 2.2.x. These are 1.1.3 uh, roughly. So make sure that your ISRM inside your access radio is downgraded to 1.1.3. In this case, this one is, and I'll show you exactly how you can check. So I've already upgraded this radio. We've got plenty Welcome of videos on that, so I'm not going to go over it. But what I do want to show you is. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to menu and hold that down, and then we're just going to hold page down. And you can see on the first seven of seven, because it goes backwards if you hold page down, you'll see right here firmware options and module RX version. And whoops, let me hit exit. Sorry. Uh, not Scroll down to modules RX version right here. And when you do that, you're going to see the IRSRM inside here is 1.1.1 slash 1.1.3. If you go to the Free Sky website, obviously you can upgrade to, I believe it's 2.1.6 now. Uh, but if you do that, then you've got to upgrade the XM Plus receiver on this uh, drone or else they won't communicate. But since this is 1.1.3, we just brought the radio down to 1.1.3 and we're gonna link them together now. So what we're gonna do is, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, let me just zoom in here just a little bit so you can read it a little bit better perhaps. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I've already got a model here. I'm just gonna, uh, oh, whoops, I'm gonna, Sorry, I'm going to hold the menu button. I'm going to press the menu button once, and then I'm going to get to my model screen here. And there's my first one. I'm going to press page, and I'm just going to name this uh, a petrol. I'm going to P uh, E. Let me see. T. Okay, and then I'm just going to put the numbers. So, petrol, 70, whoops, well, of course. So, I missed the 7, I went to an 8, so I'll go back in just a second, 75, and then I'm going to hit exit. I'm going to press it again, and I'm going to go to 7, hit it, and then exit. All right, so I've got petrol, 75 in the name. Now, I'm going to scroll to the left, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have ACCST D16 selected. Um, I am also going to Ch keep my channel range at 1 through 16. This isn't a big deal. Uh, if you're just doing this for the first time, your receiver is actually going to say 0, 0. Let me show you something. Best way to stay in, 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 uh, in uh, organized with this is make sure your receiver number matches your model number. So what I'm going to do is I went back and I changed it to 0, 1. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the drone and I'm going to, I I'm going to hook this up to a, uh, uh, a AC-DC converter so I have a power switch. Uh, and this will just make it easier for me to hold the button down and give it power. So I'm going to do is I'm going to press the button. I'm hoping this isn't going to interfere with our video because it may interfere. But I'm going to press the button here, the bind button on the XM Plus. I'm going to turn it on. You're going to get a solid red color here. Okay. And you're going to have a solid red and a solid green on the receiver. And then when you have that, go to your bind here and just hit bind and scroll down. I did 9 through 16 telemetry on. When you do that, if it's binding, you should see the red light start blinking like it is here. Once it's blinking, go ahead and hit exit 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 back to your main screen now turn the drone off and then when you turn it back on you will see now that you have a green light here and we are now bound okay now what we have to do is we have to go through the part about setting up the channel so that we have our switches set up right so let's go ahead and do that real quickly i don't think that's been done on here yet so what i'm going to do is now that i've got my model on the top here i'm going to hit menu i'm going to press page 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 Okay, so I have the standard TAER setup here, but I need an arm switch. So I'm going to scroll down to inputs and go to number five, and I'm going to hit the, 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 the wheel here, press it, and I'm going to call this arm A. Uh, let me go to arm M. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I like to keep it capitalized, so there we go, arm. Okay, and then hit exit. And under name, I'm going to call it arm as well, so A. I'm very particular about this. You don't have to be, but I am. So let's just go with that for now. 
arm, okay? When you've got these two input and name done, hit exit, go down to your source, click it, and I'm gonna make this switch, the SA switch, my arm switch, okay? Once you flick that, it'll automatically replace it in here, and now you can hit exit, 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 and now you're gonna to go to number six. Number six is gonna be my mode. My mode is gonna be like if I'm flying in horizon or I'm flying in angle or I'm flying in acro, whatever it is, okay? So we're gonna press the button and then we're gonna call this one mode. And I believe they're gonna limit you to three characters on the top, so I'm gonna put M. And if you want it to go capitalized, just hold the wheel down for a second. So M and then O and then D, all right? Now I'm gonna scroll down to name and I'm gonna put the full name M O. Whoops. O, D, oh, I spelled that wrong. E, hold it down. Okay, there we go. Now my mode switch is gonna be this one here. So I'm gonna go to source, click it, and while it's blinking, I'm gonna flip my SC switch right here. Okay, when I'm done, exit, exit, exit. And now I'm gonna do my fail, my fail safe switch right here. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go to number seven, press the button, and we're gonna, you can't spell fail, um, because it only takes three letters on here, but I'm just gonna put F-A-I. Uh, so F, oh, sorry, A, I. And I'll go down here and I'll do the full name. Oh my gosh, I, L. This is also gonna be considered my buzzer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this switch up here. So when I click this here, just like that, SD is my switch, okay? It's a two-way switch and that's it. So let's hit exit, exit, exit. Now, now we've got, now you can see we've got channels uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? So now we're gonna, now that we're done with that, unless you have any need for any more switches, I'm gonna leave it at that. Now I'm gonna hit page again and now I'm on my mixes. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna go to channel five, press our wheel, and it's already got this, it's already telling us it's gonna get the source from channel five on the uh, inputs before, which is fine. You don't even have to touch it. So I am gonna name this. So I'm gonna put A, uh, R, M. Hit exit, exit, go to the next one. This is uh, mode, and I believe you can spell the whole word out up here. So M, uh, O, D, and then let's put an E, exit, exit. And then for number seven, we will put fail. F, whoops. F, A, I, L, exit, exit. Okay, now we can actually see these inputs in beta flight. Okay, so those are our mixes. And we'll get to our outputs here in just a second. We need to calibrate first. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out, get to the main screen again, and let's just hold the menu button down. And we're gonna press page, and we're gonna keep pressing it. Uh, we can set our date here, so if, let's go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead and we are 2021. Okay, and we are the 12th month, and it is the 21st day. The time is uh, 1219. What is that, so 12. Oh, that's right, because we don't go to 13 until, oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm not worried about any of this. I do want to make sure we scroll down until we get to our, okay, so our time zone, I think it's going to be, what are we, like minus six or minus five? Uh, I think it's minus six, but I don't know. It could be minus five. Uh, country code is US. That's fine. Um, what we're going to do is we want to go here. Make sure you're on mode two. Channel order is T-A-E-R, and that works good. So now we're going to hit page that all looks good let's hit page global functions we don't need trainer uh, we don't need here's where we want to be under page six to seven under calibration press your button and it's going to say press enter to start which is pressing your wheel again and now it's going to tell you to put the sticks in the center so line up everything in the center and that includes your dial here if there are any other dials i don't know if there are any more on this no i think that's it once everything is lined up in the center go ahead and press enter and then just gently take all the sticks all the way to the edge, okay? And you wanna do it gently because if you do it too hard, then what's gonna happen is when you're flying, it's gonna expect you to press that hard when you're going to the edges or else it won't know you're at that limit. So there we go, and then just turn it all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, just like that. When you're done, enter, and you're done. 
Now you've got your calibration done, all right? And we can see that if we go look at our values, everything's looking pretty decent for the most part. All right, so that's how we set up the radio to get ready to set up the petrol if you want all your switches done this way. Now we're gonna set all our switches up. Now let's plug in the petrol and let's take a look at beta flight on how we're gonna set the rest of this up, okay? If you're purchasing this for me, I've already done this for you, but I'm now gonna show you what your switches mean, all right? So you can follow along, if, if anything, just for the switches. All right, so let me get beta flight thrown up on the screen here. Uh, bear with me a second. And I will take my ugly face off of this and I will give you guys the chance to look at beta flight. Okay, so here we go. Let's go there. All right, so now we're looking at beta flight. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in, I'm gonna power this up. And I'm gonna plug in my USB. Hopefully we won't see inter any interference uh, with the uh, VTX being on. So I'll just try to keep watching that. Okay, so there we go. We have everything hooked up here. And so now what we're gonna do is um, we are going to click, and I know you can't see that because it's right in the way. So just trust me, if you look right there, we're gonna click connect, and then I'm gonna put this back up, okay? So let's put this back up now, just like that and at least you know that that's where it is. Okay, so we're gonna connect, and we're gonna basically try to lay this as flat as we can, just for the, well, it's not gonna work with the USB under it. Um, so let's look at ports, okay? So we have our UART on port one, all right? We have our, uh, our SBUS on um, uh, uh, UART two, that is, and we have our uh, smart audio on, um, on uh, soft serial one, okay? So now what we're gonna do is let's go to our configuration, um, we have bi uh, we have bidirectional set here. Motor direction is reversed. All right, uh, and let's keep scrolling down. We've got it named already. This should be the standard settings. Uh, I can go ahead and turn telemetry on if I want to. I'm not sure I'm going to even activate it. But let's just do that first. I just want to look around and make sure. So let's click save and reboot. All right. Okay, and I believe that the uh, I believe that the port here is turned on for the Wi-Fi, so that you can do wireless configuration of this, um, and so that's why that is where it is right there. All right, so now let's go to our receiver. That's the most important thing. Okay, so first thing we notice is see how roll is all the way down, and if we move our throttle stick, so we know that we are T A E R, but this is A E T R. So drop this down, and go down to Spectrum right here. And all of a sudden, there's the TAER that's set up. So click Save. All right. Now, from there, what we want to do is you're going to see if you have numbers bouncing around like that roll up there, uh, 1498, 1497. Let's go ahead and configure this to read properly. Okay. So we're going to go back to the radio here, and we're going to uh, click Menu quickly, and then we're going to press Page, and we're going to keep pressing Page until we get to our outputs right here. Okay. On our outputs, we want to basically make minor adjustments so that each thing reads properly. So channel one is throttle, all right? So if you if I move the throttle stick, you're gonna see the value at the top of the screen here. Let me let me swap these real quick. So if you see this, I'm on channel one, and if you look right here, as I move this, you're gonna see, all right? So and then you can look in beta flight and you can see what that affects. All right. Now channel two, right? is going to be, let me see, where am I at on channel two? Uh, channel two is going to be my roll, okay? So you can see that adjusting right there. Channel three is going to be my pitch, and you can see that adjusting right there. And channel four will be my yaw, and you can see that adjusting right there. What we wanna do is we wanna get these to read 1500 in the middle, right here on beta flight when they're in the center, okay? So let's start with the roll first. You see when I move this and the roll is showing at 987, 2011, and it sits, oh, it's sitting at 1500 right now. But we wanna change the minimum to be 1000 and the maximum to be 2000. So here's what we do. We go to our roll, which is right here, okay? And we click it, and then we click edit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our min. And we're gonna take our stick and hold it all the way to the left and we're gonna click the min right here and we're gonna to scroll to the right until we get it to read 1000. You should be able to look at beta flight and you should be able to see it read 1000 on the beta flight screen and you wanna go off the beta flight screen, okay? So let's do that. And I'm gonna to try to power this off real quickly 
so that we can um, hopefully not have that VTX because it looks like it's interfering a little bit. All right, and then, so now we, what we want to do is, uh, you can see where now we're in the middle and it's kind of bouncing around 1498, 1500. So when we're done with the minimum, now let's go to the, scroll down to max and take your roll and go all the way to the max. And you see where it says 212 and in beta flight, it says like 211. Click that and go all the way to the left until you get it to read 2000 in beta flight. There, perfect. Now let go. Click it and you're done. The little bouncing in the middle, I'm not worried about. It does seem to be pretty accurate, but if it continues to bounce, we can deal with it or we can add a small dead band here, which basically says if you're within that range and it's like um, bouncing one or two, then just put one or two and the, the quad won't even notice it happening, all right? So we've done our roll. Minimum, minimum should be a thousand. Let's go back now and go to our min because if we go back and look at it, we need to click it. Let's move it to a thousand, there we go. And now on our sub trim, if you see it, like sometimes I'll just flick that, and there you go. See, once you bounce it back a little bit, it'll go right back to 1500. So don't adjust the sub trim yet. That's what you would adjust to have the middle value. So let's not worry about that. So we know we're at 1000, 2000, and we're at 1500. Roll is perfect. Now let's hit exit, exit, and let's go to pitch, which is gonna be channel three. Enter, and then edit. Now, what we wanna do is take pitch all the way down, and we're going to take our cursor to minimum, just like we did the other one. And while we're holding this down, and don't, don't crank it down, just kind of hold it lightly. Hit that minimum, highlight that minimum, and hit enter, and start scrolling to the right until you see in beta flight that it equals 1,000. And there you go. Click it again. Now take it to the maximum. Scroll down to the max menu here. Hit enter. Go to the left until in beta flight it says 2,000. Enter. Okay. And you're done. So now we have our thousand, our two thousand, and on our roll we have a thousand and two thousand, and we're good. So now let's go to yaw. So yaw, let's exit, exit, and yaw is going to be channel four. So let's hit enter, hit edit. Okay. So now on yaw we're going to go all the way to our minimum. Scroll down to the minimum, hit enter, and then you're going to go to the right until you see it read one thousand. When you do, hit enter, let it go. Scroll down to max, go all the way to the right, hit enter, and scroll to the left until you see it read 2000. Hit enter, and you're done. Now, if you can see there, everything is reading 1500. This is very good setting. Let's just do the throttle just for it, okay? So now let's hit exit, exit, and let's scroll up to channel one, which is throttle, hit enter, hit edit. All right, now channel one's already all the way down. So we're gonna go to our minimum, and we're gonna to scroll to the right until we get it to read 1000. Okay, now we're gonna go all the way to the top and we're gonna to go to max and we're gonna to scroll to the left until the max reads 2000. Excellent. Not worrying about the middle here because it's very relative to where your middle is and where you think the middle is. So would you look at that though? If you look at that screen now, everything is dialed in at 1000 and 2000. That means all our controls are exactly, the values are exactly how they're supposed to be. Now, looking over here, if you notice we have, if we flip this switch, which is an arm switch, we're gonna see auxiliary one move. If you flip the mode switch, we're gonna see auxiliary two move. And if you flip that fail switch, we're gonna see auxiliary three move. You will not see anything else respond because we did not set up any other switches. So we have one, two, and three, all right? So let's take that now, let's, uh, let's look here. What we're talking about here is the stick low threshold. This is something to pay very close attention to. This basically says that if the value of your throttle is above 1,050, this machine cannot arm. I am not a fan of 1,050. I do not know why they put it this way. But let me explain to you that if you have a throttle above, let's say 1,005, okay? So I'm gonna put 1,005. All right, and I'm gonna click save. This says that if my throttle is pretty much not all the way to the bottom, because all I have to do is just move it just a little bit and I'm at 1026. So if I'm not below 1005, I don't want the quad to arm, and here's why. There's either something wrong with my stick. If it's all the way down, it shouldn't be reading 1050. It shouldn't be reading above 1000, to be honest with you. And if it does, you need to take the time to recalibrate your radio. The problem I have is, is some drones are set to arm no matter how they're being held. Like it, it, there's no angle protection. And what that means is if you're carrying this and your throttle is 
it was reading 1050 or less and you hit the arm button, the quad can actually arm while it's in your hands. At 1050, those props are spinning and those props can hurt and cause serious damage. So I prefer to have it that if it's not pretty much all the way down, can't arm the quad. So if you're sitting there like this and you try to arm and it won't arm, you need to go take some time and calibrate your radio and don't be lazy about it, all right? Stick center is 1500, we have that set. Stick high threshold, if you look here, it's basically to be recognized as the high for command, and you could do this and you could just put 2000, all right? I'm not gonna mess with this too much, uh, uh, at this time but because we did calibrate this you easily can just put 2000 if you'd like um, but i'm going to leave it at 1900 just because it really doesn't make a difference we're not flying in this area rc deadband we would use if any of these are fluctuating let's say they were bouncing i'm going to move these sticks let's say they were bouncing like this between 1502 and 1498 you would add like uh, three to this and so that means that if it goes within three of the center it's not gonna re it's not gonna count it, so you won't see the quad moving. And right now this quad is dead still, okay? But if you notice, if we were to crank it up just a little bit, watch what happens if I take the roll, and I'm gonna use my slider to do this. Okay, now look at 1504, now look at my quad, okay? It's gonna slowly, if you can watch this, it's slowly rolling, okay? Here, I'll try to level it so you can see it. Let me level it first, and then you can see it roll. Let me spin it the right way. Now watch what happens because of just a three count. Watch, if you look at that quad, it's rolling right now. That's because we have 1504 instead of 1500 and 1500 is our center. So the quad believes it's being given a command even though I'm not touching the sticks, right? Now watch what happens if I do a dead band. If I go to a dead band and I say four is the dead band and I click save, our quad stops moving. It's basically saying anything of a value of four or less don't take it into account when you're moving the quad. Well, I don't want that. I want it at zero, click save, and I wanna adjust this back down. So let me go ahead and put it back down. Trim center. All right, and now we're centered and the quad is not spinning and everything is perfectly level. Make sense? Great, so there we go. So those are our, uh, those are our uh, settings, all right? Now let's go to modes. In modes, what we want to do is we want to see, okay, we want our auxiliary, this is our mode, this is our arm switch right here, but it's not having any effect here because the factory sent it with the wrong auxiliary or the auxiliary doesn't match us. So we're going to click an X and I'm going to click add range and it says auto. I'm going to flip the switch I want. I tend to, I take this switch here and I make middle position and position towards me my arming. And the reason for that is if I bump it by accident, if I bump this switch by accident and send it to middle, I don't disarm my quad. Okay, so that's my arming. Now I'm gonna go, these are my modes. So you remember how we had mode? So this has an angle and an horizon mode. So I'm gonna delete both of these and I'm gonna click add range and I'm gonna flip this switch and closest position to me is going to be uh, horizon mode. And then I'm gonna click add range here and the reason this is still arming is because I haven't saved yet, so it doesn't know auxiliary one. It still believes it's auxiliary two, so just don't worry about this right now. Now for angle, I'm gonna click add range. I'm gonna flip the switch again, and I'm gonna say middle position is angle, lower position is horizon, all right? Now watch when I click save, it's no longer armed anymore, right? Now it would be armed, and this is telling me I'm in horizon mode, this is telling me I'm in angle mode. Let's scroll down and see what else they had. They have the beeper set for auxiliary one. Well, that's gonna go on our fail safe. So I'm gonna delete this. First, let's go to fail safe right here, and I'm gonna click add range, and I'm gonna flip the switch, okay? When I do that, that's our fail safe right there. And I'll put beeper on the same thing, um, because it's not, a, it's not a three way switch. I guess I could have made it a three way switch, but let me just put beeper on here anyway. So add range, and uh, we'll flip the fail safe. So basically, when you flip your fail safe, your beeper should be going off if your drone has a beeper, okay? And let's see what else they have, air mode. So they have air mode set for the middle position. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put air with acro. And so we're gonna delete this and we're gonna click add range and we're gonna flip our mode switch and we're gonna move air mode all the way to here, all right? That means that if we're not, if we are not in angle mode or in horizon mode, we're gonna be in acro mode with air, all right? Uh, they do have a flip over after crash. I'm not really sure if we're gonna use that here, but you know what? Let me go ahead and I'm gonna save this. Sorry, my dogs are here and they're having fun. I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, I'm gonna use uh, one of these temporary. Okay, my dog's going crazy. I'm gonna use this switch, which is a momentary switch. I'm gonna use that. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sam, 
Any chance you might be able to help me here? Thank you. That's that's what I need. I need you to yell on top of them barking. All right, so we're going to go to channel 8. We're going to hit enter, and we're just going to call this flip. So I'm just going to put capital F, and then I'm going to put a lowercase l, and a lowercase p. Okay. Hit exit. Whoops. Sorry. Let me go here and hit edit. I didn't mean to leave that. And then let's go to name. F. L I and then let's do P okay exit now for the source let's get our momentary switch which is SE right here that basically means you hold it and then you let go it goes back okay hit exit 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 perfect now let's go to page and let's scroll down to our on our mixes page go to channel 8 hit enter and let's call this flip Okay, and hit exit, exit, exit. Now, if you look in beta flight, and if I go to, if I go to my, I'm gonna click save here because I don't know what change I made, but if I go to my receiver tab now, watch this. Now all of a sudden I have an auxiliary four that's moving. So let's go to modes. Let's scroll down to the flip. After crash, we're gonna click that off, add range, and just hit your switch. So what we're saying is when it's up, we're gonna turn it on. So let's drag this to here. And I think that's a lot, click save. And that's it. We have now just set everything, okay? So what we want to do now is, the last check we want to do is we can um, go to our motors, all right? And this drone is pretty docile. I'm not really worried about the the, um, <laughs> the stuff getting, cutting. You just, just, you can just hold it from the bottom here and very carefully give it power. And now it has power. And what I like to do is I like to check to make sure the motors are right. Now don't forget, if we look in configuration here, our motors are set to spin opposite, which means normally you would have clockwise motors, clockwise props on prop uh, motor uh, one and four, and counterclockwise on two and three, and instead we're reversed. So we're gonna have clockwise motors on two and three, and counterclockwise on, on one and four. So when we go to motors, we're gonna basically make sure our motors are resourced properly. So we're gonna click this, and then we're just gonna gently lift this up, and make sure that motor one is spinning and make sure you can feel the wind pushing down. Again, this is a very docile thing, so just do it very carefully. And you can feel the wind, okay, so that's good. Let's go to motor two. That's this motor here, and I can feel it blowing down, so this is spinning the right direction, and props are on right. Motor three, that's this motor here, and it's spinning the right direction. And then we can go to motor four. Yep, and everything's spinning perfect, all right? And if you wanna test the switches, Okay, you can just flip that right there. And if you, once you have this arm, you can, once you have this button switched, you can actually take this switch here and flip it and make sure that your system is arming properly. Okay, now some people, I will tell you this, some people prefer not to have the motor spin when they start it up. I don't like that because I like to know when the drone is armed. Okay, but if you wanted the motors to not spin, you would basically flip this switch right here. And unless you're in acro mode, watch what happens. If I flip this now and I turn this on and I arm it, well, I can't do that because it's not sitting still. I apologize. That's my fault. So let me, let me, uh, I need this to stop a second and I have my value too high. So let me just change that real quick. I don't think I changed it here. Sorry about that. I didn't save it. That's my problem. Let me click save. Okay. I meant to save it so you can see that. Give me one second. That's my son calling. Let me just mute that and I will call him back. All right. So now let's get back to it. I forgot to save it. So let's go and let's try to hold this level as we can. And let me power this off. Let's give it some power. There we go. All right. Now if we go to motors and we allow it to arm and we are in either and we are not in air mode. See, it's armed right now. And I'm not gonna get anything to happen. So let me let me set this down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure it's calibrated. So I wanna I wanna make sure it knows it's balanced. Okay. And what you're gonna notice here is that let me see where I'm at. Alright, I've got too much amps pulling right here, so let me just plug in the battery. This will make it easier. Okay, 
connect. So if I plug in the battery here, and I will disconnect the beta flight. So let's just get to our regular screen because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get interference with this one. So let me just plug this in. Here's our battery. And what I'll do is I'll actually, let me just plug it in regular here. That way we make sure it's everything set up and I can set it level. Okay, so there's that. And I put this little piece of tape around here, out around the battery, so it would kind of fit tighter. So let's take this, let's plug it in. Now, now this quad is ready to fly, but I wanted to demonstrate to you the difference between the motors uh, spinning and not spinning in the setting, okay? So first thing we're gonna do, make sure all our switches are right, okay? So everything is right here. Let me zoom out just a little. It's gonna interfere with my camera. So let me move the drone just a little bit. Okay, make sure all your switches are right. Now, if you wanna tell the drone that it's, once you plug it in, that it's level, what you're gonna do is, while it's sitting here, take your left stick and go to the top left, take your right stick and go straight down and do a five count. What that does is that resets the accelerometer and tells it, hey, look, we're on level ground now, so everything is level. And I know we're cutting out here, so let me just try to, matter of fact, let me see if I can change the channel on the, on the VTX, and that's probably something I can teach you guys how to do. So let's do that real quick. So here, we're gonna look for the channel here because there are channels that interfere with the Wi-Fi signal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find out what channel this is on. And I'm gonna show you guys how we change that real quick using Smart Audio. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is take your joystick, your left stick and go to the left and the other one and go straight up. Okay, and that's gonna bring you to a VTX. Uh, that's gonna bring you to a VTX menu. Let me do that again real quick. There it is. All right, and from here what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down uh, I gotta be able to read that. So let me let me move this out of the way so it's not interfering. Let's scroll down to features, and then we are gonna go to VTX. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the band. This is on. Uh, let me see. I don't have the best screen set up for this. Uh, let me go. I'm gonna go down to band here, and I'm just gonna change it to where am I at? Uh, let's change it to frequency. I'll change it to frequency five, and I'm going to drop the power to 25, and I'm going to see if that will uh, stop interfering. So now, as you can see, the 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 screen has changed. We lost our signal because I changed the channel, and I'm hoping that that will stop it from interfering. Okay, so there we go. You see how much clearer that is now? And now I don't know if I bring the camera here if it's going to interfere still or not. There are some... Okay, so it looks like we're not interfering anymore. So again, um, <clears throat> to do that, if you want to change your video channel <coughs> excuse me, using smart audio, all you do is you take your stick to the left. And, and Well, let me exit first. Let me save and exit. Okay, so you would take, you take your throttle, go to the middle position, and then go to the left and go with your right stick, go up. From here, you can go to features, go to VTX, and then you can change all your settings in here, all right? So we've changed it now. So now we can get back to this not interfering. Then I'll let you guys watch this while we try to take this out for a spin. So let me go back to exit. Whoops. Let me just go back. I don't want to save anything. I just want to close out. I just want to exit. There we go. Okay. So now if I arm this, right, I'm going to tell it it's level, so I'm going to... I'm gonna take my left stick and I'm gonna to go to the top left and I'm gonna take the right stick, I'm gonna go straight down, okay? And if you notice on the screen what happens, top, I go up, left, top, left, and straight down, you'll see this X, you see that quick X, it just blinked. That's okay, it now knows that it's centered, right? Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch this down, if you look at my radio, I'm gonna switch this down to um, horizon mode. And when I arm, we have nothing spinning. But if I put it in acro mode, with air and I switch it down. Well, you will in a second, sorry. <coughs> you see how it spins? Because <coughs> air mode, air mode cannot have uh, non-spinning props. It's part of this, props are always spinning. So I'm gonna take my stick and I'm gonna switch it here. As you can see, I'm gonna switch it down to horizon mode. And there we go. Now, if I move the throttle, you can see it's already ready to go, right? But I have to move the throttle. So here goes. I'm going to land it real quick so that you guys can see, and I'm going to increase, whoops, I'm going to, my bad, I'm going to increase the, uh, the VTX power uh, to 100. I think it can go higher than it goes, it does go to 200. So I'm going to set it 200. Yes, I'm going to confirm that, and I'm going to click back, and I'm going to click, this is my TV that's doing, my screen, because the battery's low. So let me save and exit. 
and then let me plug this in. All right, bear with me a second. Okay. No, let me click. Yeah, I think my poor screen is gonna die. All right, let me go back, save and exit, and save and exit. All right, now, let's see if we can watch this. I'll try to get you guys to watch, and I'll just fly it around a little bit. And you're going to have a little bit of signal issue here because this metal building does not like some of this. But here we go. And I'm going to bring it right back. And there we go. Perfect. This thing runs like a champ. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to change the, uh, the uh, power back. Oops. Sorry, I'm gonna, no, 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 I'm in the wrong screen. Sorry, let me go to VTX. And I'm gonna change the power back because, I'll leave it at 100, because it starts getting really hot. Um, and so, I, because I'm doing this for a demo purpose, it's not gonna help you. So let me do that there, there we go. And then I believe that will pretty much wrap it up. All right, so um, that's it, guys. That's pretty much all there is to it. So if you're getting one of these from me, uh, I want you to be able to see this video so you know exactly what switches do what. Okay, so this is your arm switch right here. Top left is your arm, top right is your modes. All right, and then in your modes, it's acro mode with air. You have angle mode, which means that you can only fly to a maximum angle. You cannot do flips in angle mode, okay? And then you have horizon mode, which means that it stays flat the whole time once you let go of the right stick, but you can do flips if you go extreme, all right? And other than that, uh, you have your fail safe right here, all right? And that is basically, if you see something wrong, just flip it and that'll stop the flight immediately in its tracks, all right? Other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. I know it's pretty much, uh, what is that, 37-minute video. Skip around how you like, but the point was is I want my customers to understand it, see how to program one of these radios if you want with it, and uh, you're good to go. So uh, have fun, enjoy it. I know who this is going to, and man, I hope you have a great time with this thing. You, you flew awesome outside when the school was here, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you fly with this one. All right, everybody else, God bless, be safe. Merry Christmas to you guys. Most of all, go spend time with your family. Never know how much, how much time you have left, guys. Go make the most of it. You can always fly later. Talk to you soon, guys. Peace.